The sports editor is very pleased to have Ernst Jubé to chat to us this morning about, about his playing career and also what he's been up to from a professional point of view. So I'd like to say hello to Ernst Jubé and thank you very much for joining us today. Nice good to be here. Thanks for taking the time to come and chat to me. Lovely. And before we talk about what you've been currently doing um, from a professional point of view, can we talk a bit about your career and, and how it escalated and you ended up playing in England? But you started off playing in South Africa um, and you seem to be doing very, very well and then but taken to go play um, in England for Saracens. If we could ask, what was sort of the motivating factor as to why, why Saracens are all places, all, all clubs? Um, I, I always wanted to finish my career overseas. I thought it would be a good life experience. Um, so bearing in mind, I, I had a fairly late start to my, my rugby career. I, um, after school, I took a gap year to England, worked there, played a bit of rugby, um, came back, studied at Stellenbosch. It's only one of the, in my basically third, fourth year where I got noticed and and I signed a contract with the Lions. So I was actually, I was 23 and a half years old when I signed my contract. Okay. And then I had an injury for a year and a half when I rocked up there, had three operations, so it took me quite a while. So I actually only played my first game for the, for the Lions in 2005, so just before I turned 25. Um, so I had a fairly late start. So I, I then... When, when I left for, for Saracens, I was 29 years old. Um, I was fairly old in South Africa. People at 27 asked you when you're going to retire and what you're going to do next. In the UK, it was a little bit different. So I felt, look, I'm never going to play Springbok at 29. And it's probably a good time for me to, to go and explore and do something different. So um, I had a chat. I, I thought the obvious choice would be France. And then I threw the grapevine hurt that Brendan Fenter was um, was going to be the coach of Saracens, and he threw the grapevine, heard that I was kind of keen to go overseas, and uh, and he contacted me, and we set up a meeting, and the next thing, I was at Saracens. Wow, amazing. Yeah, Absolutely was, brilliant. Uh, yeah, so, and then I went over thinking I'll do it for one or two years, but yeah. I'm old. <laughs> and then I realized when I was in the squad there that I wasn't that old. I was <laughs> fairly average age. Yeah. Um, and, and then... Two, one or two years became six and a half years. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant, lovely. You were very successful with Saracens. Um, tell us more about that time when you got named in the Sky Sports as Viva Premiership Dream Team in 2011. You know, how was that? How to... Yeah, I think the first, I was fortunate enough. I think my first two years were both. I mean, it's, it's probably just a few pundits that decide the team. It's not that I don't know if it's really that special accolade or great <laughs> thing to achieve, but it's uh, someone that likes you and they decide. They want to yeah. put you in the team. But it kind of worked. We, we went there and uh, we had a great culture and we had a great team and the guys were willing to f work hard for each other. Um, and we had a great plan, a simple plan, but everyone knew exactly what to do. Um, and obviously, Saracens, the year before, in the towards the middle of the lower part of the table. And I was at the Lions where we had successful times, but the, the last season we struggled a bit. There was a lot of turmoil at, at the Union. Um, so I think the breath of fresh air and was just good for me, and mm. and I enjoyed it and played well, and I was in a fortunate position where they used me in the right way. So yeah. scored a few tries, and and it it kind of worked out, and mm. I was lucky enough to be nominated for Player of the Year, Premiership Player of the Year, um, on, on the top five, and missed out to Chris Ashton, I think. Sure, it's lovely stuff, good stuff. <laughs> So you played over 100 games for, for Saracens. Um, if we could look back a bit in, in your mind, what game where you felt you were probably that was the best victory or the best sort of set play that you've ever done in a game that made you feel, wow, that's, that's something I've achieved that will probably be in the memory banks forever? Um, sure. So I did just think of one. Mm. I mean, it's hard to go as an individual if yeah. I had a brilliant game there because um, <laughs> this is a team sport. But yeah, yeah. Means, there was there were special ones. Obviously, winning the premiership against Leicester was was fantastic mm. in the second year. Yeah. Um, but we achieved a lot of as as we call it making memories. Uh, we we achieved a lot of things that no Saracens team achieved before. So we we went to Leicester for the first time and had okay. and beat Leicester wow. there. Wow. In, in my six and a half years there, I think I only lost at Leicester twice. So we sure. became like a. Yeah. We, it became like this thing for us where mm. we're going to win away from home. We yeah. were very good away from home. Um, and, uh, 
And then uh, another game that I really enjoyed was in our first year. Our backs were properly against the wall. We started off like a house on fire and then f- fell off the pace a bit and managed to, I think, we ended third or fourth. Okay. And we had to go to Franklin Gardens and play Northampton, who was a fantastic team there. Yeah. And probably the favourites to win the premiership in the semi final. And we kind of fought our way into that game and we sure. scored like a more try at the end of the one. Game. <laughs> so that was a Brilliant. special game. Even yeah. though we lost in the final against Leicester, which was probably a good thing for the future of the club. Okay. Um, didn't feel like it at that stage. Yeah. Um, but that was a special one. That's mm. that's kind of a game that I really remember standing out of. Yeah. Came through this cold winter and all of a sudden it was a hot day at Franklin's Gardens and they played well and we played well and we ended up winning the game and went to the final. But that was probably the way we reacted where you could probably see that was almost like the final we yeah. won and that's probably why we slipped up. Okay. Um, and the sure. last moment against Leicester. Yeah. That was a story. Brilliant. Um, the English game seems to be played at quite a speed, quite a pace. Um, Based on that, is that the reason why it's very well supported and perhaps the African rugby could learn from that? Does African rugby mean to change its approach? How do you um, feel that regard? I think it's a, there's a bit of everything. I think yeah. the, because it's clubs and clubs are based in towns, uh, okay. you get towns supporting the clubs. So if you're in Saracens, we weren't really fortunate enough to have, be in a small little town. But if you look at your, your Leicesters and your Northamptons and Bath, it's basically Bath plays on a Friday night, the town goes to support Bath yeah. on a Friday night. And if Leicester played before Leicester, the very successful football team that yeah. came through and won the Premiership, the town supported Leicester. So yeah. that was a that helps a lot. Mm-hmm. So the town is supporting because they see the people on a daily basis. The town yeah. company sponsor okay. um, the club. But then also, it's obviously, it's a smaller stadium. So yes. you sit with a 15, 10... 20,000 seats, which is yeah. really easy to fill, and the quality of rugby is good. Mm. You said it's a fast-paced game, but it's weird. It, it, because your season is so long, you go through four different, basically, yeah. seasons. Uh, you, you get your... You start off, it's fairly nice, it's spring, it's it's warm, and then you go into this autumn, winter, which is <laughs> okay. terrible. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden, when the season ends yeah. again, you almost mm. head into the summer. Um, yeah. So you get to fast-paced rap. It's very organized. So I think it, back then was more defensively orientated. All right. We really focused on defense a lot okay. and a little bit of attack and yeah. built our foundations on that. Um, well, I felt South Africa, a lot of attention went into attack and something you can't, yeah. you do all these set-piece moves and then but you can't really control it. So yeah, at, the end true. The, at the end of the game, you have one set-piece move and yeah. the whole week you've done 20. Yeah. Um, so, so that's, so it changed. So you've got this fast pace and you get the slow playing in snow and yeah. mud and, oh, right. and all of a sudden it changed again. So sure. you just had to yeah. like, be able to adapt. Okay. And, and it's a lot of rugby. I mean, yeah. a lot of games there. Oh, that's brilliant. That's I, think brilliant. I was after three seasons. I was fortunate enough the first three seasons not to really have any injuries. Okay. I think I, I, think I was on 96 games after wow. three, three seasons. That is amazing to hear. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. I don't often hear of that, which yeah. is brilliant. Talk a bit about South African rugby, so just get your opinion here. Um, do you feel that South African rugby is strong enough to always be competitive at the highest level, or do coaches need to perhaps change their, their approach? If you look at the Curry Cup recently, there's been a sort of like a revamping, so to say it. Do you think it's boded well for the season, or are we, are we maintaining our standards, if I can ask you? I think we, had a, we went through a bit of a dip, and yeah. I, it looks like we're climbing out of it again. Um, obviously... The Curry Cup was was fun this year because it's shorter. Uh, uh-huh. It was quite competitive when it was yeah. decent rugby. I think because you don't have a lot of big names in there like in the old days where a guy plays Curry Cup for five seasons. Yeah. You feel the quality isn't good enough because you don't you don't recognize the name. Yeah. Um, but obviously we've we've gone through a bit of a, a struggling purple patch, and yes. uh, and I would like to think if you look at the Springboks, we getting through it. Absolutely. Our quality at schoolboy, we, we've got a ridiculous amount of good players. Yeah. You can just yeah. go and look at all over the world. People really respect South African players and they yes. want them in their teams because we're a hard-working nation. And, Absolutely. And uh, we're willing to sacrifice and we are. Yeah. We want to win and we're competitive. So yeah. um, even our older players won't just go abroad for a retirement package. They'll actually have a massive input. That's uh, true. And 
So we lose a lot of players, but we do have a lot of players, and, and we're fortunate. And I'm in the Springboks at this moment. Obviously, it's just before the World Cup now, but I think we'll be successful. There's obviously a, yes. one or two stumbling blocks in the way, but if we yeah. can get over those, we can go all the way. And yeah. uh, it just showed that if you get the right structures and plan in place, we've got the players that can follow that plan. Absolutely. Yeah, we're very lucky with the depth that we have in this country. There's just talent yeah. oozing out of it, which is great. Let's just chat a bit about your, your, your professional, your, your current career. Um, you are the head of the Stellenbosch Academy of Sport uh, Rugby International Institute. What was the idea behind being such involved in such an initiative here in Stellenbosch? Um, I, can't, I don't know if so I fell on my lap, but it, yeah. uh, I retired and through I came back from Saracens and I worked at Rengro, who was 50% shareholder in Saracens back then, and they owned the Stellenbosch Academy of Sport. And, and when I came back after a year being at Rengro, we, uh, we basically had a, a blank page to start a rugby okay. division in the facility and nice. also to develop talent, talent in South mm. Africa and to maybe, like I said, blank page, think what yeah. we want to do. And so the first thing we decided was we really want to run a proper high-performance rugby institute or academy um, mm. where we function as a team. So it's a, it's a guy that takes a gap year. Yes. Um, he might yeah. have been in a small school. He doesn't know yeah. if he's good enough, but we give him a professional program and he goes, look, I'm good enough. I can make it. And then we try and get an exit for a boy. Mm. Well, some boys go, you know what? This is not for me. I'm going to go study. And at least you answer that question in five months. Mm. So... Um, we, we take a small group of players as well um, yeah. because we function as a team and we want to yes. really focus on individual and individual skill. Yeah. Um, and we open up to the whole world. So we get boys from abroad. And I oh, think brilliant. When, when cultures can mix, it's fantastic yeah. and it does yeah. a lot for the player as well and mm. matures people. Mm. And it broadens their horizons. I mean, if you walk out here, you can go and visit a guy in Chile and Argentina and France <laughs> or wow. America one yeah. day or England. Absolutely. And, and you're friends for life because we know that's the way rugby works. So... Mm. That's basically our flagship product, and then we obviously we do position specific games, coaching seminars uh, throughout the year. But yeah. our, our flagship is a five month international institute where we really want to give the mm. boys a feel of high performance and what it will yeah. feel like when you're professional. Because not a lot of boys know exactly what it entails to be a professional rugby player. Yes. So you think you work hard at school, you yeah. have the one session in the afternoon. I know the guys work hard at school now, they the gym in the morning, mm. they're professional. And then they, at least in that five months, you'll answer the question, is this for me? Um, yes. And some guys live, but they, they, they actually yeah. they get a new lease on life yeah. and they want to do this. And other guys just shy away from it. But it's not it's not silly. It's not trying to break a player. Mm-hmm. It's just giving them a high-performance, proper rugby program to yeah. make them better. Absolutely. Now, that sounds that sounds great. Um, just walking around this this campus, it's, it's absolutely amazing. And it, it's got many uh, facilities. Um how could one see more about it? Where, where can I find more about this campus and what it has to offer? You can go on the, the this, this SAS training website if you want to learn more about the facility, but yeah. the website where you'll find everything is www.sasrugby.com. That's our website yeah. there. You can yeah. see if you join where you'll stay, you'll see. So for us, it's we've got this magnificent facility in the middle of Stellenbosch mm-hmm. um, with beds, with restaurant, with swimming pool, with gym, with rugby fields. So for us, it's we. If you come here, we want to make your life as simple as possible, so that you just have to worry about developing your rugby. Oh, that's great. And that's basically that's the, mind, brilliant. the mindset behind it. So, yeah, yeah. fortunate enough, you don't need a car; you can walk anywhere. So yes. Which is a mm. small enough town. It's a nice student town. Yeah. It's a very safe environment, and uh, and and we're very proud of of, uh, of the facility we have, and it definitely helps, mm. gives us a bit of an edge as well, I believe. Uh, in developing the players. Absolutely. So you offer quite a broad spectrum in terms of what is an offer here at the academy. Um, would you say this makes this um, institution unique to any any other academy that there is out there? I don't know, actually. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, obviously, there's a, there are a few academies out there, but the nice yeah. thing with us is we put a permanent home of the Blitz Box, so, which that, mm-hmm. so if boys come here, they, they see your, your Blitz Box heroes training here every day. We, yeah. we get the we oh, partnership awesome. with the, the SA Academy, so the, the, the youth... Mm. junior Springbok team that they do their five month preparation here for, for the Junior World Cup yeah. uh, and then we get various different we, the Stellenbosch football clubs here which we, which that's owned um, so there's a 
it's, we get various, we get Olympic athletes coming through here in the summer to do their preparation. So there's yeah. there's a lot of different sports going on there, but there's definitely a strong rugby flavor in the facility. No, it's absolutely brilliant. Um, am I right in saying you guys are going overseas quite soon? Spending some time no, in so Italy? There's, so there's a group for, um, in Italy that ask us to come and just implement some structures and do exactly. some training and coaching with them. And uh, so we're off there to basically broaden our horizons and, uh, yeah. and hopefully bring back one or two Italian boys is quite keen on doing the programs as well. Um, but yeah, it's just obviously helping where we can and trying to develop the game all over the world. Brilliant. Ernst from the Sports Editor, thank you very much for your time. We wish you all the best for your future endeavours and we trust that the Senator Bosch Academy of Sport continues to grow in forward in leaps and bounds and all the best for your future. Thank you very much, Ernst. Thank you very thank much. You. Cheers, man. Thank you. Cheers.